Today we're going to make this tape dispenser and I've kept this tape in drawers for oh, years and years and years and um, you know it gets banged up on the edges and if it's you know cheap masking tape like this right here as you try to pull it and it's dinged on the side it'll rip and then you got to try to pick it off the roll and you're always trying to find the end and get it loose and so anyway I just thought it'd be nice to make a tape dispenser that um, where I could just kind of keep it all out here and we'll see you know if I like it over time or not but um, let me pull you in here close and I can show you uh, kind of how it's made and then we'll get into how it was built okay so um, it's got the dividers in here and they're grooved out with a router and each one of them has a spindle in there that is just a, a block of wood with a, a pin through it and then the front edge has a piece of uh, bandsaw blade on it that acts as the part you know rip to uh, rip the tape off so um, all right let's get started we're going to use some old cabinet door doors that my son gave me and uh, when he remodeled his kitchen and so I need to rip this molding off the side that's the first thing I'm going to do Okay, we got to decide what size to make this thing. So, this is the this is the a new roll of tape, and it is five inches. So I'm gonna say that the biggest roll I would probably ever have would be six inches, which I'll probably never even have one that big. So we're gonna say six inches. I do terrible sketches, but we're, so we're gonna say the bottom. It's gonna be six inches from front to back, because they're gonna sit in there like that. So from front. From front to back it's going to be six inches and then the height on it we're going to do it like a regular tape dispenser so you're going to pull this and it's going to come out over the front so that needs to be I'm thinking halfway up the roll so if it's if we're doing six inches then we're going to say halfway up a roll is three inches so well, maybe we ought to do this really more like right in the center of this roll, which is two and a half. So, all right, so the front needs to be two and a half. So, we're going to mark that down front, two and a half tall. Now, that's from here to here. So, really, the front needs to be three because we, we want room underneath, you know, so it, for it not to drag. So, we're going to make that three. Three inches tall, six inches back to back, and then I guess really the front and the back could be the same. If we make the bottom to sit on the inside and the walls sit down to the, you know, if the walls sit all the way down to the tabletop and then the, the bottom fits up in there, then the side walls actually have to be three quarters more than that to account for that thickness on the bottom so all right so the side walls are going to be three and three quarters and the bottom is going to be six inches by well whatever length we got all right let's cut some more out all right so we'll set our fence to six inches we'll cut that bottom piece first because it's our biggest piece so we'll cut it first Okay, so here's what we've got so far. This is our bottom that we cut out, and here's our front, and here's our back. And now I've kind of laid these in here, and because they're going to have a three quarter inch board between them to divide them and also hold the spindle that they're going to turn on. So um, that's one, two, three, four, five, six rolls. So we're going to need one board on the end and one on each end so that's two of those and then the dividers are going to be they're going to fit inside the end uh, pieces will go all the way across well you know they wouldn't I think maybe I'll just make them all the same you know push it in a little bit but that way the front will look better so I think that's what I'll do all right so I'll just make them all the same so it's going to be one two three four five six seven another one on the end is eight 
and then I can probably get maybe two more rolls in here sometime is 910. Okay, so I need 10 pieces that are they're going to be six inches deep. So, so let's see. We're going to do something like that. So it's going to be six there. And this part's going to be three. Well, yeah, three inches. And then I want them to come up a little higher because I'm afraid if I, if I cut the spindle sides and, and just drop this down in there, and it, the and it's the spindle on it is just just barely down in there. I think it'll jump out when you go try to pull the tape. So I want the I want the slot that they drop in to do to be probably a good inch deeper. So uh, let's say we want these to be three at least four inches tall. All right, so we need to cut four inches and then we'll start whacking it off into six inch pieces. All right, let me find some wood. Okay, I, I got all these ripped to, I wound up making them four and a half because my board was wide enough. So now I'm going to cut them all off in six inch pieces. And I should be able to get three out of each one, I believe. Let me make sure. Yeah, just barely. Okay, so I want the tape, roll of tape, to be as far back in the dispenser as I can because I want you to be able to stick your finger under the front and pick up the tape. So, I'm gonna, the biggest roll I've got is two and a half and it's brand new, so I'm gonna come off, I mean it's five inches, so I'm gonna come half that distance, which is two and a half up, and that's gonna be the center line for our spindles that are gonna hold it. And then I want that spindle is probably going to be like half inch. So I want a good oh, quarter of an inch on each side of that probably. Yeah, that should work. Okay, so that means that this top part is going to need to be an inch wide. And I'm just trying to figure out what the chamfers are going to look like. Okay, now the back wall is three inches, so the back one can go from three inches all the way up to the front of that. But the front one, I want the front one to actually be below the lip, the front lip, so that you can stick your finger in there and grab the edge of the tape. So. Let's say, I mean, if I was going to reach in there, if I was going to reach in there, I might want a good three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to make the front two and a quarter. Okay. So then if I connect those two lines, all right. So we get something that sort of looks like that. All right, now let's get the miter saw set up and we'll cut these. Okay, I had a second thought. I've got to route this out to hold the roll. And I'm thinking that I'm probably better off to route this groove while I've still got this wood on here to give me ex the extra um, stability, you know, the extra edge of the board to guide this thing. All right, so let me get the router set up. All right, I've got my ancient uh, old Craftsman uh, router table set up, and I'm just going to use this piece of plywood as a fence, and I've got a mark I put right there. That's where the center line of our spindle is going to go, and I'm going to line that right up on the middle of the router bit, and then just put this fence across it. Okay, so now I have butted up my part that I'm going to route right up against the drill bit 
And I want that groove to be an inch and a half, so I've marked me a line, an inch and a half on my fence. I'm going to put this right here as a stop. And I'll get this clamped on. And I want this to be pretty accurate because I want I'm going to then have to flip these over and run them this way up against the stop and so I want to make sure that my grooves are the same so my tape won't sit in there sideways. Alright so that is an inch and a half. Okay. Also I decided to make this spindle, we talked about it being a half inch, I decided to make it quarter inch uh, because I've got some quarter inch uh, steel rod and I think I'm just going to use that. I was planning on using like half inch dowels but the steel rod I think will be a whole lot easier. So that's what I'm going to do. Alright here we go. Alright, that's got that side done. Now we're going to come over here and we're going to do the same thing on this side. All right, we're getting ready to cut these on the miter saw. The first cut's 54 degrees, and I've got my saw set to 54 degrees. And I've just got me a pencil line right here that I'm just going to run them up to and chop them off. Okay, the next angle is 37 degrees, and I got it. I'm doing it the same way. I got a, a mark here, and I'm just going to chop them off. Okay, the next thing we got to do is figure out the spindles to roll these on. So I did got out the old high school geometry and this is a three inch circle so I wanted to know what size square would fit in there so it's you know the old a squared plus b squared equals c squared triangle so if this has got to be three inches then this and this is actually two and a half inches, two and an eighth inch, and that fits right in there. As you can see, it fits, fits in there perfectly. And then what we'll do is we'll just make a hole, we'll uh, figure out the center of that, drill a hole in it, put a pin in there, and then that will be what our tape will roll on, okay? All right, so we've got to get a bunch of these cut up. And what I'm gonna do is, this is three quarters, and I'm going to use three quarters for the smallest tape. I've got some that's half inch and some that's one inch. And a three quarter inch one will do all of those. And then for the one that stuff that's two inches, I'll just put two of them together and it'll be inch and a half. And that'll be, I think that'll be enough to, yeah, stabilize it. So it'll spin pretty good. So, all right, that's what we're going to do. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and glue these two together, and then once I get once it gets glued, then I'll chop them off the length. That way, I won't have to line so much stuff up when I glue them. You know, when they're drying. All right, we'll set that aside and let it dry. 
Okay, so I'm starting to kind of figure out how to put this thing together, and the next thing I need to do is give all of these pieces a quick hit with some sandpaper. Okay, got our parts cut, I've got them sort of sanded, and I'm going to start nailing it all together. Okay, it's got it all glued and nailed together. I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. And next, we need to start marking these out to get the holes drilled in them to uh, put the pin in that it's going to ride on. Alright, I'm just going to mark the diagonal on these. Okay, I've got a, a quarter inch drill bit in the uh, chuck and make sure that the table is squared up to the bit and let's get these drilled. Okay, we're getting there. Got all our blocks drilled out. And now we got to cut the pins and I've cut, I've actually got them cut. I cut one pin on the bandsaw and made sure that it fit. It's a little tight here so I made the next one a little smaller. And then all the rest of them are the same size. And then these all three are different size. So this is, that's the smallest one, and then that one, and that's, that's the largest one. So, all right, so the next thing we've got to do is put the pins into these, which are just a little, just a little bit tight. And then we've got to put an edge on here to use to cut the tape. And I think what I'm going to use is a old bandsaw blade. The tricky part, well that one's really tight. The tricky part is going to be um, getting holes in it um, 
to go down through here. Now, if you didn't have an old uh, bandsaw blade, because this is a half inch bandsaw blade, it's, it's pretty wide, so I think I'll be able to get holes in it to put it in. But if you didn't have one of those, you could always use like a uh, hacksaw blade. Would probably work really well, and it's already got holes in it. That may be what I wind up having to do. We will see how successful we are because you know a bandsaw blades really is really hard steel so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is heat it up with a torch and while it's red hot drive a punch through it because I don't think I can drill it Trying to kind of get them in the middle. Well, that one didn't look very straight. Okay, let's go see if we can get that bandsaw blade uh, done. Okay, we've moved into the metal shop and I've got a bandsaw blade in the uh, vise and I'm going to try cutting it by hitting it with this chisel. Well, that got part of it. Okay, that worked. Now, I need to measure how much of this we need. I've got it sitting over here. Okay, so I'm gonna make this second cut. We got, I know the length we need. Okay, here's the, here's the band we cut. And I've now got, got it marked where I wanted to put holes. But I can't drill this stuff. It's too hard, of course. And uh, I tried heating up this end and hitting it with a punch. And it almost punched it out, but it deformed the metal and all, so I beat it back flat. And, um, I tried drilling it after I had heated it, you know, trying to anneal it, but this stuff doesn't anneal. So I think what I'm going to do is put a little screw here with a washer between each board and screw it down. And I think that'll probably hold it. All right, so we get out the drill, and we're going to drill a bunch of pilot holes. All right, now I'm going to take a little washer and a screw and put it in each one of these holes. Okay, you know, I think that's going to stay on there pretty good. Okay, so, let's load up, turn around here where I can get to it a little better, and let's load up some tape. working okay so there it is the new tape dispenser all right thank you for watching